Bam. What's up, everybody? We are in the building. Um, we have a special guest today, Mr. Bomani. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, brother. I tried to work it out, but you're going to have to do us the honors. Bomani Tayemba family. This is okay. Bomani Tayemba from Africa for the Africans Tours and Investments. I've uh, been in business from 2006 to 2021. 15 years of working hard, dedicated to my brothers and sisters in African diaspora to get us connected properly in Africa so we can reintegrate back into African society. And we have all of the setups to get our people connected. And we are here to look out for our folks. And um, uh, you know, so family, uh, it's all about nation building and black power. Hey, beautiful, beautiful. Sounds great. Um, give me a one guys in the comments if the audio is okay for you so we can handle it if it's not. But we're gonna get right into this. My brother is very busy. A Garvey Pan-African brother from Jamaica originally, right Bomani? Uh, yes, uh, originally from Kingston, Jamaica, born and raised, um, lived in Jamaica uh, until I was 11, and I moved to Brooklyn, New York when I was 11 in 1988. Okay, so, Bomani, one of the reasons why I really uh, wanted to bring you on is because we've been having a lot of stuff going on with the uh, diaspora war, you know, Black Americans versus the world. We, you know, a lot of us, we think we're so tough, you know what I'm saying? And we like to, uh, we act, sometimes we act very dismissive of the fact that you know, America's a melting pot. Black people as a whole have only made it as far as we've come by sticking and working together. So I love the fact that you have some of that Jamaican experience. About half your youth is in Jamaica and then the other half of your youth is in America. So you represent like Pan-Africanism, not even just in your actions, but even in just your history, your lineage, your life. So it's really it really uh, makes a lot of sense when you look at your upbringing and, uh, and, and, and like the things that you're passionate about. So today we're going to talk about these felonious accusations made against you by <clears throat> this grifter known as the unapolog unapologetic Negro pen. Uh, the guy pretty much, there's a saying, my grandma used to tell me when someone tells you who they are, believe them, right? When right. someone tells you who they are, <laughs> believe them. The guy told you he's unapologetically a Negro pen, meaning his focus is not on blackness, empowering black folks or anything like that. Right. Right. It's all about the uplifting of white supremacy, white dominance and black people being in service of that white dominance and white supremacy. Hence his name, 
Negro pimp, a black person who is striving to be a European. Okay, so we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna get into this, but before we before I start with the questions, right? The first thing I want you to do is I want you to respond to something that uh, we're gonna call him Tomb because I get tired of pronouncing his whole name. We're gonna respond to something he said himself when it comes to black people. So during the interview that you did with him just the other day on Saturday, you asked him, what are you doing to uplift black people, right? He, he, he said, "What you asked him, what are you doing to uplift black people? And for our audience, what I wanna do is I wanna take a second to play exactly what he said in response to your question. And we're gonna play that It's not, my, it's not my job to uplift black people. It's my job to make busy two and a half hours. No, brother, I'm, I'm brother, day. brother. I'm making my only time for you, and I'm making my only time for you. For me, really. Okay? My, your I'm only time. To you, I'm explaining to you, and I'm, I'm educating you about what we're doing, and I'm also Don't telling you about devil. yourself. Uh, uh, to call me a devil thirty times. Is that the reason why? Uh, what are you doing? To, to help you get, what am I doing for, to build in Africa? Is that what you're going to say? No, no, that's not the question. No, say it again. Go you on. You know what are you What are you doing to uplift black people? What are you doing to uplift black people other than just being jealous of them? Like you're jealous of me. You're people. jealous of me. It's, my, it's not my job to uplift black people. It's my job to make. Okay, so okay, so what we're going to do? That was pretty. I mean, it's straight from the horse's mouth. He said. He reiterated, he said, it's not my job to uplift black people. And, it, and saying it once wasn't enough. He said it again. It's not my job to uplift black people. So what do you have to say to black people who support someone, right, who makes accusations against our people, right, against Pan-Africanists, but makes it very clear, it is not my job to uplift black people. What, what do you say to those people who follow this guy and love to just absorb this this demonic spirit from him uh yes family uh the main thing that um want everyone to know is that i'm a cool calm organized business person and if anyone see me getting loud with this guy is on purpose because we cannot allow people to disrupt our movement and literally go after everyone that's literally in africa trying their best now are some of these people perfect none of us are perfect we all have our flaws but the fact that we made our move to do things in africa is incredible but if you are a black person and you're talking about you're doing an oversight to make sure that we do things properly in africa or you say that uh you represent pan-africanism or you're representing uh to make sure black people do anything and then you turn around and say that it's not your responsibility and then you're going to call even marcus garvey a scammer that's an insult and a disrespect it is all of our responsible as black African people to do what we need to do to help each other work together and build the future for each other. Our spiritual teachers like Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Kwame Nkrumah, these are the lessons that they taught us. And they taught us based on the work that they did and committed. So myself, yourself, and a whole lot of us out there, we are doing the work of Pan-Africanism and nation building. And any black person that say that, there's not their responsibility. They are a Negro Pian coon and they are literally an enemy of all black people. And literally, and then if you're going to fight down on us and then you don't fight down on the true enemy, which is racism and white supremacy and all this other global stuff by all these other people to dominate us and dominate our continent, you are an enemy. So the fact that black people support a person that's called himself an unapologetic Negro Pian and things like that, send them donations and things like that. It's very sad. So I'm telling our people, those of us that are really about this life and business, stick together. No one has seen me made videos of any of us that's out there trying their best to do certain things. The only video I've made of people that have done anything to me is the Black Devils from Garvey Town, which he later on used an audio with Kwaku, which is one of the co-founders of Garvey Town, going off on me because I explained to Kwaku that we are organized here. We've been had a group together and we have our money together. And we gave you guys $22,000 of our money to get 28 plots on Garvey Town. And you guys are playing with our money and you guys are not giving us access to build what we need to build. So when I questioned him, just like you questioned the people in Garvey Town, 
they're quick to go off on you and they're quick to talk down to you because they have these fake black British have a serious problems with black people in America and many black Americans or African Americans and you know things like that. Uh, but literally, they feel that they should be like the the white man in England and be the black version of that and conquer the world and have every other black people report to them and they control things. And it's a sad situation. I do have some good black people in the UK and other parts of Europe. Much respect to you guys. I'm not talking about you guys, but we do have a serious problem with some of our people, just like we have crazy people here in America. But my point always as Africa for the Africans, our business is to find the best black people around the entire world for us to work together. And when we get to Africa, our goal is always to reintegrate into the African society. We're not about building a nation in a nation. That's not what we're about. We're about working together. The chief, Nana AT, that we acquired the land from, we paid for the land. And that was the 15 acres cost us $70,000. And I have all the transfer, all the information to send to anybody if they ever question me that we receive free land. And I'm just coming up with a bunch of prices. And also we have attorneys, we have business people, we have a whole network of people, surveyors, uh, consultants, and people that are, are general people that will literally help us with different things, building teams and, and so on. I spend a long time putting this together. In the last two years, things have worked out real good. And I'm so proud to tell people that we have a wonderful community called the Black Star Pan-African Community, which in December of 2020, we literally got clearance to start building our homes. And I'm proud to say that we have built two homes and we have several people building more homes. And we have access to help everyone with their residency, their citizenship, and even visa is simple. And if people need help with that also, we help people with those things. And if you're in an African country and things go wrong when you have problems, I'm one of those people that have a good diplomatic connection in many countries, especially Ghana. So if something happens to you, we have people that can help you. We have judges, we have attorneys, we have business professionals, we have people that work in the Lands Commission. We have a full network of people. And the only reason why these people, these wonderful Ghanaian professionals trust people like myself is because I spent from 2006 to now bringing lots of groups of people, over 450 different people to Ghana alone on 19 different journeys. We have business conference, we have citizenship conference, and we have literally done the work. I'm not one of those people that's on YouTube talking loud and disrespecting people and, and going off on people. And everyone that's my customer, they'll tell you, I treat them with the utmost respect, like a brother. And I, even in situations where people have disrespected and treated me a certain way, I've given them the benefit of the doubt and dealt with them as a brother. The situation that people saw me with Negro Pian is something that he deserves, something that he was asking for, and I let him have it. And I did not disrespect my company and disrespect my business partner. I represented them to let them know that we cannot allow this to happen. So I told him about himself, and that was my only chance to give him the business. Because when you're picking on people that are in the content doing things, like I realized he was picking on like certain single women that have children that are doing their best, and he's like, calling them out. I mean, what kind of real man turns around and gossip about women and gossip about people that are changing the spectrum of how we connect to Africa, even though they're not perfect? So those are the things that I like to share with people. I tell everyone, do your research because you can have anyone just pop up out of nowhere. This guy has only been on YouTube for about a year or so, maybe less or maybe a little bit more, but he has done absolutely nothing to uplift black people and done nothing. All he's trying to do is destroy our business so he can convince people to send him the money that people send us for tours, for business and things like that. So he can hold in his escrow account and then see if we're legit. What kind of foolishness is it? I'm in business for 15 years. You don't see people come out and say, Bomani took my money. I showed up for a trip and the trip wasn't there. Everybody that's ever showed up for a trip, they got their trip and they was able to be taken care of. And everybody that purchased land or went to land acquisition to us, they have their land, they have their paperwork and they can start building. Okay, so, I mean, when you talk like how you talk, it just, because I don't know you. I, I've never met you. Um, when you talk like you talk, it sounds like you've just been doing a lot of hard work for a long time. And as as is the case most times, the hard work is, is paying off, finally paying off. You might have had a bad situation, but now you've gotten into a better situation that you are probably more in control of because you've probably realized what I realized as the control freak I am, unless you're 100% in control, you depend on other people, they always can mess up your plans, right? So now you got something that you're running and you, you're you the boss of that. You're the chief. 
Yes, and that's the case for Black Star Pan-African community, where I explain to people over and over again, family, all African people around the world are welcome for us to work together. We just don't associate with certain behaviors, okay, and things like that. Like we don't get all into the, the interracial thing, and we don't get all into the same-sex thing. That's not us. And we tell people, that's your business. We're not here to talk against you. We're just here to get the best people that we need to get so we can build family and generational wealth. And Black Corporative Economics, as taught by one of my spiritual teachers, Dr. Amos Wilson, who wrote the book, Blueprint for Black Power, and many other books dealing with psychology, has educated me to learn to work with my people, to put our money together. So when we do a trip, when we do a tour, when we do business investment, we do conference, certain things, we're putting our money together, we're working together. And also all the tours that I've done, they're 95% Black-owned operation once we get to Africa. That means... Maybe one or two things are owned by someone else, but everything is owned by black people from the hotels and everything else that we do. Well, the well, the airplanes obviously ain't owned by black people. So that's, <laughs> the five, that's the five percent. If you got the power to think, you automatically know what the five percent is. But I love the fact that you're not just bringing people to Africa and saying, "Hey, uh, we're gonna go give all our money to whites or Arabs," right? Because even myself, when I bring my group members over to um, to Africa, you know, I um, I let many of them stay with me in an Airbnbs with people who are black around me. But once we go to like other cities and things, I try to give them the experience they're kind of used to in America. So I do, you know, recommend, hey, stay at this place based on how nice it is. I don't even think about the ownership, right? So you, because you've been doing this way longer than me, you've gotten it down to where you make sure 95 to 99% of the whole experience is all black. And I mean, that's something like for me, that's something that I, I aspire to, right? So like, even now, I believe you're a little older than me, already within Pan-Africanism, there's this evolution where now the younger Pan-Africanists now have older men, not really older, because you're probably a couple years older than me. I'm 43. <laughs> right, so you're just a couple years older than me, but we have someone to look up to and say, look, now that's how you do it better than I'm doing it. So I really appreciate that. Like that, you're like, you're teaching me as well because I'm learning when I'm listening to you. The, this next question. Okay, so there, I, one thing that stuck out to me in the interview is when um, Unapologetic Negro Pian talked about a lady who was on one of your tours and she got left behind. Now, me being a person who has hosted people in Africa, I understand that. Somebody doesn't want to fall in line with the group. They start thinking like an individual or putting what they think is important or most important over the over the natural progress and procession of the group. That person, they're making they're not set, you're not leaving them. That person is asking to be left behind. Like, no, 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 I'd rather do this. Explain to us a little bit about that situation because I really want you to be able to clear your clear uh like clear the air on that. Because I know it's like a lot of people try to use that as like, you know, like, like weaponize that against you. Go ahead and just real briefly explain the situation and uh, tell us like a little bit about what happened. And ultimately, what was the end result of that? Well, appreciate you. And also, that wasn't the only person that got left behind. It was two other people that uh, they, they got left behind. But it's one of those things where you literally explain to people over and over that family, you can like sometimes some people don't show up in the morning and get on the bus, which is fine. And then sometimes people get on the bus with us and they do their own thing. And that's also fine. But we tell everyone the schedule that we have. And also me and my tour guide will literally get off the bus and run around and look for people. But when somebody blatantly push you out the way off the bus because they wanna run and do something else because they see the tour guide running, the tour guide is just running to get whoever is missing. And then you say, you're gonna go and go get a smoothie and things like that. And I'm saying, sister, can you please just sit down? Uh, the bus is about to take off in a little bit. And she had no respect for me and things like that. And I'm the tour organizer. I'm the lead. I'm the director of the company. And you're literally going to chase a tour guide. A tour guide works for us. The tour guide, and I told the tour guide after that, please don't do this because we need to have some level of order. We can't have people just running off the bus and doing what they want to do. We have a schedule and respect the schedule. So we didn't leave the sister. Um, we literally held the bus uh, just further down. And we saw her running. And we stopped the bus. And we just let her get on. And then she got into a situation where she was upset. And then she let uh, one or two other ladies stir up in the back because I told them that literally she obviously do not want to be on the bus with us. 
and she would rather go get a smoothie. So we don't have, we can't do this. We have an appointment to be at a, a village to where we can do our work. And once she got to the village, brother, I've never had somebody just talk to me in front of a whole village and my whole group like that, call me all kind of nasty names. So what I did, I asked my two assistant female to basically talk to her because it's unacceptable and I'm not going to put up with that. So that's the thing that when these things happen, people put together parts of the story. It's kind of like when he's showing right now that the guy, um, you know, Kwaku talking about me and saying I'm a disruptive person. Well, I represent a group of people who put their money together and I'm the strongest force and energy. And it's like, our money was given to you and I'm going to represent people. And if you don't want me to keep you accountable, because everybody we do business with, we have to be accountable. So you can't just say that, you know, you know, you, you, you know, you, you just can just take our money and I can't address you and speak to you about it. So, you know, this person is using clips from my own videos that's on my YouTube page that I basically share with people our full experience. We're literally an open book. Even the homes that we're building, he say that we don't, we're not building any homes, it's scamming. We have interviews with people literally showing us, showing them at the house, building the house, interviews and things like that. And all of those things are on our Black Star Pan-African playlist that's on YouTube. Just like if you want to see what we did in Tanzania, you see 174 videos from interviews from us also leaving the U.S. to get in there in the country and every step of the way. So I literally try to show people more documentation so they can see it. And you on the website, you'll see all the group pages and or all the, the group pictures from us from 2021 all the way back to 2006. And there's also photo galleries at all of these tours. So I'm doing my best to share with people. So I tell people the best thing to do is do your research, check out the information, but people can say what they want to say on YouTube. And it's what is it's like, they can say what they want to say and it's like it's like you can't like remove their videos and, and do certain things you just got to deal with it so we need people to do research and do critical thinking about everybody they're dealing with i'm someone that's been in this business for 15 years and things like that and you're going to discredit me and talk down to me because i'm not satisfied i'm not walking around with a camera all day long and showing everything that we're doing in the country we have also people there that's, that's going to be showing more of their homes and things like that and it's on their channel and things like that but it's not right for people to do this and attack someone of my magnitude who literally work with all of us. Anyone can call me and talk with me. I've always got all of our backs. Right. Right. And I, and I totally understand that. Like, like it's, it's so crazy because I, I have a group called the OAP and you know, we do our thing, right. But I'm a dictator in OAP. No one, it's not a democracy. You feel me? And I say <laughs> that off rip, but I already understand where you're coming from because when you got a bunch of other people's money and you're responsible for that, there's no room for games, right? There's no room for games. So the guy Kwaku and I watched that video and he's talking about you and stuff. And I'm just like, bro, what have you done? No one gave you any money to do anything for them, but the guy's problematic who's protecting other people's interest, right? Because he won't let you mess around with his money till he's gone. And time and time in, until it's gone. And time and time again, you see people go alone into Ghana and places in Africa. And they trust these types of people, right? And next thing you know, $25,000, $30,000 is gone. And they don't have anything to show for it. So, like, this leads to my next question. Pan-Africanism is evolving. And, and one of the ways in which it's evolving, I feel, is it's like it's growing teeth, Right? We're showing our teeth more where we have to sometimes do the dirty work to get what we want to accomplish. What do you what do you have to say to these people who want Pan-Africanism to be like a punching bag or like this timid movement? Right. They want us to be like timid and humble and just everyone's whipping boy. What do you have to say to those people? Yeah, I say that's a sad thing because the importance of Pan-Africanism, well, we're all black people who live in America. Me, you, uh, regardless of wherever we're from, we're black people live in America. And this is the highest population in the, the, the Western world, whether you want to say America and Europe and things like that. So the fact that you have so much of us organizing ourselves to literally connect to Africa, because we realize the importance of that. We realize that we're in, you know, we're in a divided states that is sinking. And we, we realize that the future is for us to reconnect back to the source and do diplomatic mission. So you, you do have... A lot of people, I'm not even going to say some people, a lot of people out there that disagreed and they've been disagreeing with what we've been doing since I started studying in 2003, 2004, saying that we're going to build a movement in Africa. And they see the fact that 
we're, what we're doing is not what they want to do, which is fine. I tell them, if you really, really care about black people in America or black people in the Western world in general, you get up every day and do what you need to do to help your people put together energy and build in, in the future and make sure you have a better opportunity in America and Europe and so on. But the fact of it is, it's very important and it's most important that we look at our continent and build a future with our own people on the continent. Because when you look at the, the Chinese, the Indians and other Asian groups, when you look at the you know the Lebanese and other Arab groups, and you look at this, the, the Caucasian groups and this other others, they literally are dominating Africa. And what I see is the fact that if we have more of our brothers and sisters from African diaspora come together and invest, get land, build factories, build communities, build the things that we need to build as a people to create jobs and opportunities, we can we can put ourselves in a situation where we're more independent because just because we're going to Africa don't mean like it's a whole bunch of Ghanaians in Ghana and they, they control the country and all the business and everything is run by them. No, when you go to Ghana, you're going to see it. You're going to see the Chinese mall. You're going to see the palace mall. You're going to see Toyota. You're going to see all aspects of everyone else. And I'm basing this on being a Jamaican that's born in Jamaica, my own country I couldn't build a career in. My, my family literally saw the better opportunity for us was to come to America. And once I came to America, I saw my own brothers and sisters in the same struggle. And I was like, you know what? After a while, after I built my career in the Navy and built my career as an aircraft technician in the civilian world and also in the Navy, I literally realized based on black folks in America reaching out to me and talking to me as a brother and connecting me with the consciousness, which I appreciate because these things I didn't learn in Jamaica. And that's why I'll always be committed to my brothers and sisters in America because I did not know anything about being black or African until I came to this country and you know, and things like that. So the fact of it is Pan-Africanism is important because we're going to literally build something together where we can work together and have the things that we need for our children because we got to build that black corporate economics for that generational black world. The same thing we talk about, we talk about we have all this money in America, but then we all work hard and it goes back to the system. So if you don't invest in something black power or invest in Africa, you're just basically working hard for the system and giving everything back to them. So that's what I'm telling people about. And it's like, if anyone just don't like what we're talking about and they don't want to do the work and connect with us in Africa, that is fine. But don't get in my way of connecting with other people who want to work together because this is a divine mission. If we don't do this, our children will have no future. Right. And, and, and I think it's so powerful what you talked about with like seeing the better opportunity in America. You have a lot of people who they really feel like uh, black immigrants, Africans, uh, Jamaicans, Caribbeans don't really appreciate uh, the opportunities that they have in America and the role that black Americans play in them having those opportunities. But to really hear someone like you, you know, speak how you, you're speaking, it's like, do you even have to acknowledge that? Like, it's it's a part of who you are. You're you're like living proof of, you know, the role that black Americans played in like everyone being able to kind of come up and secure wealth. And you were saying like you didn't even know anything about pro blackness or black power <laughs> until you came to America. And no, I, always, I, always, I tell people when you're in a place where everywhere you look is black, you don't look at black people as like a minority or underclass. Or like we have to stick together to make achievements because you're like everybody from the mailman to the freaking captain to the, to the president is black. Right. So really, when people come to America, they get their wake up call. And it's so funny that like somebody like Marcus Garvey came and he really was like, where can I build based on blackness? And he, he saw that America was at that, that place. And so it's really sad to see that now you have black Americans who are literally trying to tear at the fabric of that thing that really puts us in the position that we're in where everyone's looking at black America. Like, yo, if you want to build based on some blackness, that's the place to go. Like all the Pan-Africanists, most of them are coming out of America and then they're going over to Africa and we're getting things done, including you, including you, you're coming out of America. So I really appreciate what you say. You speak honestly, you speak transparent, you're transparent with what you're doing. And I judge a person by transparency. You get on here, you're not afraid to come on in public and speak about what's going on. Now, this guy, the unapologetic Negro European, you most of us don't even know his, his last name. His name is Otis, we know that. 
But beyond that, what do you know? Does uh, he Otis Brian, right? <laughs> right. Do you know his? Do you know his family? Who's his wife? What do his kids look like? The guy, everything is hidden. It's hidden. So what we like is like, I feel like as black people, sometimes we like the dirty shit that you can't see more than we like the clean things that you can see. So a lot of us are disingenuous, but it, it, it benefits us when we realize that there are those among us who love a dirty, they love a dirty secret. They love a dirty lie as opposed to the clean truth, right? And they'll pay for that. They'll pay to go and perpetuate that lie. I don't want to keep you too long. I want to show one more clip from, uh, I want to show another clip from the unapolog unapologetic Negro PM. You were, in, when you were speaking, you were talking about your job, what you do. Just from hearing you talk, I see you were in the Navy, right? Uh, yes. And okay. also it's one of those things where I'm one of them people that in business, what you have on your website is about us. It tells you about the person that's running the organization bio. So I have all those things detailed. And people question me about my African name. My African name was given to me by my community in a Rice of Passage program. And it was, and so the certificate I also put on our website on About Us that talks about my uh, biography and things that, I, and I talk about all aspects of my life from, from military to civilian to doing the tours. And again, um, let me just add this thing in. I would not be able to do these tours if it wasn't for black folks in America. And I would not be able to do the investment that I do in the country if it wasn't for black folks in America, even though we have a nice little um, uh, population from the Caribbean that is also part of the investment group, which is, is still work. But again, I just we you know want to show respect to our brothers and sisters all over America, even regardless where you come from. This is a strong force of us to do some things and put our energy together because there's nowhere like America where you have this aspects of this black power and the history of what have happened to our people and it's been documented. And even when we talk about like the Black Panthers and things like that, those are the things that empower people like myself, you know, and things like that. So, you know, let's let's try to just uh, give ourselves respect and uh, show ourselves love and things like that. And um, some of us are crazy in this country along with everywhere else, but this is still the most important aspect of what we need to do. So I'm, that's why I'm connecting with you and you always see me with other people that are you know, born in America or from America. And I tell people, I was like, why do you think that? These are my brothers that are ready to fight with me. Right, right, right. And, and me and you, we, we, don't, we haven't really been talking to each other long. We, we just met, but we're all motivated behind the same thing. And a spade recognizes, you know, a spade, like, uh, 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 like real recognize real, right? right always. And so <laughs> when you talk, I hear the same story that I have when I'm doing my uh, land investment group, right? And I'm like, I've experienced that, like it's like with the lady who didn't want to uh, get on the bus or want to leave. Look, Greyhound ain't waiting for nobody. You know what I'm saying? Delta Airlines is not either. Delta Airlines uh, left some of my people that were traveling and they didn't go off on Delta Airlines. Right, so don't try it. You know what I'm saying? Don't come at us thinking, oh, we can give them less than or treat us like, we're like we're unimportant or like our plans don't matter just because you feel like a sense of entitlement. She learned a lesson that day. And thank God you guys were kind enough to stop for her and let her get on the bus. But she learned a lesson that day. That was a teachable moment. So the, treat your people with the same respect. I tell people, give me like 10 percent of the respect you give white people wow. and we'll be good. That's what I always tell. I just said that to my father and all that. I said just give me 10% of the respect that you get those white people at your damn job. Because at that point, it wakes their mind up to realize, damn, I'm treating my own brother with zero respect. Because you're not going to tell Delta Airlines, hey, wait, I got to get off the plane because I left my luggage. <laughs> you be on that damn plane crying before you even attempt to tell them to stop that plane. Come on. Okay, let's listen to this part. Because I was, I was looking at this earlier, and I really just think this captivates how much of a bum the unapologetic Negro PM really is. The guy doesn't even have a job. Yeah, and, serious. And, I mean, I can always tell people about my career. And also one note, uh, if we need to spend more time going through this, I'm literally open. Uh, my schedule is available. So let's you know. We, I can be on as long as you, um, you know, as long as we need to talk. But uh, yes, go ahead. Absolutely. So, um, so this, the guy's a pure, pure bum. And I want to play this because it's absolutely freaking hilarious but this is it when it comes to business and things is rough and that's why i keep documentation of everything i have what i do in this office is you know we literally 
have a little towards an investment payment system and we literally just make sure you know when you're sending money to africa and you're doing business you have all kind of people to pay yeah you know you got the hotels the bus and certain things so we literally just handle a lot of administrative work so that's what i'm saying to you i'm a technical and a business administrator that is my profession what is your profession but holla at me okay so uh, guys um I, i'm not going to even test I, I i didn't even hear his question i was too busy reading some of these comments um um i i don't quite know what to say now um you know the reason why i brought you on was of course you don't know what to say because you ain't got no damn job craig this dude, look he literally tried to pretend like he didn't hear what you said we all heard it it was very clear he literally look he could have said repeat that hey what did you say the guy literally is like he just blew off your question what is your profession and there's always a problem when someone like can try to interrogate somebody when they're not even doing like one of the things i learned when i played football i had a coach named eric lewis played for the rams in 1975 or something like that this guy used to make me get on the ground and do fingertip push-ups on the cement and, and he and he i mean he was a hard-nosed brother man tough grab me by he the guy snatch you up and you know what i'm saying like that like a father figure type he said you want me to tell you what the number one rule of leadership is i said what's up coach he said never ask a man to do something that you're unwilling to do at that point this guy is totally unqualified to even question you like you bomani could come to me and question me hey b what you doing and what's up with this what's up there? you're doing what i'm doing you've done it you've done it better and bigger than i've done it if i have a question hey bomani what, what what's up with this or why did you do this i'm qualified to ask because i'm doing it i've made the trips to africa i spent months in africa i purchased land for my people in africa right what qualifies this guy to speak down on you he made a video about me and what why do our people constantly look to unqualified people for guidance when it comes to the people who are really like trying to work for them what do you think is the motivation behind that you know what um one thing i would say about us as a people is being a black person that's traveled around uh six continents uh 35 countries and uh, connected with a lot of black people we love drama and we find it entertaining i think most people like the entertainment because when you look at his oversight channel with a fake business production he's talking about doing and, and and business management and things it gets no views but when he start insulting people that are out there doing work and people that have been established then he start getting views and things like that so he, so that's one of those things it's like people just like those views and like those energy of those people speaking negative and drama and it's not all of us but it's like there are people literally supporting this negativity it's like basically you investing in your own demise because when you have paid informants snitches like this person uh t-u-n you literally are not going to be able to build anything so the one thing we have to learn to do is stop investing in our own demise support the black people that are out there doing the work and things like that and if you need to find out certain things find out from other credible black people this person have built nothing and have done nothing and have no record have no information online to show that he's credible and he's about business all he like to do is use is it a fake british accent uh and it also is a fake jamaican because he's, he's not even he's never been to jamaica and never lived in jamaica and have no connection to jamaica and no connection to how we actually do things in the country itself uh so he's just a person that has a made-up life and what he's doing because he questioned me about not monetizing my channel which that's my business my, my also my website doesn't have any ads on it that's my business if someone wants to do those things that's their business but obviously he's only in this for the donations and only in it for the views and the ways that he can get a little youtube money because he has no life has no career and he's literally literally trying to make a living off people by destroying them now people like the unapology and negro, negro pian are the same exact people that destroyed and sabotaged marcus garvey the same exact people that overthrew kwame nkrumah the same exact people that got dr martin luther king and uh, marcus um sorry malcolm x literally assassinated so i'm telling people that you're investing in someone that goes out there and destroy 
progressive black people or black people trying. So everyone that's there that's literally donating to them and literally just on on there to where they're supporting them, you're literally destroying your own people. Now I do understand he may have some other people on there, which is fine because the other people they love to see black people trashing each other. So I realize that he's making his money from people paying him to go on live and do these things. And it's very, very sick. And the thing of it is, he's going to run into the wrong person. Like he ran into me and I literally gave him the business on YouTube. Now, some people may say what they want to say, but family, you, someone has to do this. And I chose to be the person to go on there and cuss him out and tell him about himself. Now, if someone wants to call me unprofessional, all those other things, when you are someone that built what you built and spent the time you're working, you are not going to tolerate that and things like that. So I did what I needed to do. And now I have nothing to do with him. I have nothing to say to him. And I'll completely ignore him. And we'll just continue our movement. But I took that time to do that. So literally, family, if you're going to do anything, encourage that man to tell you about himself. Do not send him any money for oversight to oversight any projects. We are professionals on the continent in different countries that can work with you. We have a whole group in Ghana and many other countries. We have people like yourself. You're in Kenya. We have Dinas in Sierra Leone. We have Goenham in Sierra Leone. We have Dinas in Nigeria. We have other people in Tanzania. We're beginning to really build something special. And as soon as we started doing that, then these agent provocateurs are sent after us and literally sent to disrupt the movement. So family, do not do this stuff and, and support this guy because he's literally, I mean, Literally, family, think about it. Marcus Garvey, one of the, the greatest Pan-Africanists and literally built the greatest black organization with over almost 10,000, sorry, excuse me, 10 million, not 10,000 family. Uh, even today, we can't even get 10,000 people to join these groups and organize. But Marcus Garvey organized over 10 million black folks around the entire globe when you didn't have none of this technology. That's how dynamic the UNIA was at that point under Marcus Garvey. And we're literally continuing the work of Marcus Garvey, Kwame Nkrumah, and all the other great ancestors. And literally, now we see this thing is going on. So family, we're just educating everyone so you cannot fall for the trap. Right. And, and, and you know, the beautiful thing is people talk about like, oh, there can't be like one charismatic figure or like it can't be centralized. Well, the beauty of Pan-Africanism is it's naturally evolving in the perfect form because like, my, what I'm doing is not connected to what you're doing. What you're doing is not really connected to what Dynas is doing. But it's good like that because if one should fall or something should happen with one, there's still more to fill in in its place to to keep going forward. So I believe Pan Africanism is doing everything we're we we are supposed to do. Meanwhile, a guy sitting uh, in some white woman's house because he ain't paying no rent or nothing like that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He's sitting up in mama house, you know what I'm saying? Eating in whites only pies. It's in here trying to purposely destroy other black men and other black women, right? Cast doubt upon projects. And we have a group of people who say, well, the Chinese is taking over. The Lebanese, and you got brothers like me and you who are like warriors. We're on the front, front line, right? Going at these dudes, doing economic battle with these other races. And you got people who say that that's what they want, but then they support people who try to tear that down. Think about this. You do not have one Chinese uh, YouTube channel, one Lebanese or Arab YouTube channel that's attacking Pan-Africanism as far as black people are concerned. The only person doing the devil's work is who? The unapologetic Negro pen. Even if you got people who are like B1 and they're African-American or black American, and they're proud of that, they're Ados, they still do not go after the projects in Africa that are on the ground. They might not understand, they might have some criticism of what we're, what, the way we're doing what we're doing, but they're not making a channel dedicated to just attacking our projects. Um, there's a scripture in the Bible, you know, I used to be an old backwater preacher, but All in right. the Bible, and I believe it was in Job, the first chapter, it talked about the devil. And it talked about all he did every day, right? The biggest crime he was doing in heaven when he was up there with the sky daddy and everybody else that they accused him of, they said he was constantly accusing his brothers day and night, right? So when you hear somebody who is constantly accusing their own brothers day and night, doesn't mean what they're saying is true, but they're just leveling accusations against them 
that person is truly demonic because that literally is what the, the name devil means. Satan literally translates to accuser, someone who's constantly accusing others with no ba baseless accusations, with no type of foundation in reality, right? So these people are literally following the following a, de a devil, a manifestation of a devil. So there's not just white devils, there's black devils too. And the unapologetic Negro pen is one of them. Like the guy's laid up with a white demon every night, you know? And then he gets up every morning and comes and attacks his own people. You don't know what type of juju or spells or whatever that lady's capable of and has put on this dude. And we'll sit up and give our minds over to this person. And we have no idea whether she got a satanic altar in the next room. And that guy comes over there and disrespects our people. And our people sit up and lap it up like dogs, right? So I just want to put that in perspective for everybody. Okay, so we got a few more minutes. So I wanted to, um, oh, ooh, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, oh, the brother makes an accusation that you're not even a full blood Jamaican, right? And when he made that accusation, I was like, if this guy has this type of animosity and vitriol for someone who's also Jamaican like him and has the audacity to say he's not a full blood Jamaican, what does he think about a person like me or his audience members who aren't full blood Jamaicans? Like, like, why is that even an issue? If we're Pan Africanists, why does the person's nationality come into play at all? And so I just wanted to show that this guy, he doesn't care about you. This guy is very divisive. This guy is problematic. And this guy is, who is that? I can't see it. I just. No, that's my uh, Jamaican passport. Um... Right. He probably ain't even got one. Let me play this so they can hear what this guy said. True pan Africanist. Right. If you're a true Jamaican, you wouldn't be acting this way. You wouldn't be doing this. But you aren't either, are you? Let's be honest with ourselves. You're not a Pan-African and you are not a full blood Jamaican. Uh, there is something inside you, something insidious, which is making you do the things and say the things that you're doing, making you act that way. And I wanted to make sure that, guys, listen, I'm not putting you down. <laughs> Me, as a Jamaican brother, I love you. And I'm saying that. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you said to me. Okay. Well, I mean, just look at that guy's eyes, man. The guy looks possessed. <laughs> the guys look the guy looks like there's like the lights are on, but nobody's home. You're not a true blood. Okay, neither am I, neither is a lady up the street. So that means what? We're just dogs or something? This guy exposes himself every episode and his followers. I think they're under that white woman's spell too, man. They've drank the blood, dude. They, they, they doing something. Go ahead, Bomani. What do you have to say about that? I mean, the fact that um, this guy is questioning me about pan-Africanism and everything, you know, all of the men in my family, they're all married or have children with black women. And that's for the last few generations and things like that. And literally... This person is calling himself a Jamaican, never been to Jamaica, don't know anything about J Jamaica, and you know, calling himself saying he got a con or got uh, roots in Ghana and things like that. Never been to Ghana and things like that. He just sits by and, uh, literally like a fake armchair revolutionary. But the fact that he's laid up with uh, a Becky devil, literally, you're going to represent black people and you don't even have a black family. And I'm not going after people who are, you know, have, biracial children or anything like that. But this guy literally does not have a black family. And you're looking to talk about you want to do business and want to run things. You're going to literally, so you're thinking that you're going to control all of us and you don't even have the basic ethics of anything. You have no history, no documentation, and you don't even have a proper ground, no career, no anything. And don't even have the, don't even have the right energy to actually find a good black woman to do something with and build a family with and things like that. You literally went out there and got a porn star. Someone that's out there prostituting themselves and everything. You have no respect for yourself as a black man. And you call yourself a black man and all these things and talk about he cares about us and he's our brother. This is the trick the devil played. That's why I titled him Unapologetic, unapologetic Negro Pian, the black devil.
paid informant sent to destroy repatriation and sent to destroy black people? Hey, 100% brother. Like that's the thing, Pan-Africanism. It's like, we're doing the work, right? So we went and we set up the satellites. We're in Africa. We're on the ground. We're doing what we got to do. And now it's just time for some house cleaning because we have to make sure that those people like, uh, like Tune um, don't get over to Africa because once they get over to Africa, right? Once they get over to Africa, uh, they're going to just do nothing but what? Stir up trouble, right? Stir up trouble. Do you understand? So the whole thing is, look at like even with Satan, even with Satan, as far as the Bible explains him, they said he was constantly stirring up trouble. And there were many amongst even the ranks of like angels who are like perfect, who took his side. They took his side. So even a perfect creature is not above being swindled by someone who's demonic, right? So as humans, we're imperfect creatures. We're not above being swindled by someone who's coming in leveling accusations, right? We're, we're persuaded. We're able to be persuaded, right? But guess what? When the, he was thrown down to earth, guess who was thrown down with him? And guess how many of them probably said, damn, why did I listen to this fool? What, like, what did he have to offer them after they got down there and they were sitting on the rocks like, damn, bro, good job. You know what I'm saying? That's how our people are going to be. We're going to have a lot of people that are led, you know, down the wrong path. What they say, the, the, the road to life is cramped and narrow, but the road to destruction is spacious. Well, when you inhabit these, these, these areas or these spaces where it's like anything goes, nothing sacred, anybody can be talked about. And no matter how much work a brother or sister has done, they can be dogged down and reduced down to nothing and stepped on. Guess what? you can be well assured that you are 99.9% .9 probability, you know, that you are on the road to destruction. And just like Chancellor Will Williams wrote, you know, the, the, the destruction of black civilization, it's not the white man. It's not the Chinese or the Lebanese. We've existed with these people on earth for thousands and thousands of years. The only person who can destroy you is you. Destruction comes from within. If you have defeated the enemy within, the enemy at the gate can do you no harm. That's a quote. That's powerful. We have to get rid of these types. The unapologetic Negro PM. Cancel them out. Because in the beginning of this, we played the clip. It is not, he said, it is not my job. It is not my job to uplift black people. So you already know. Nothing he's doing, whether you follow him, send him money, jump on his Patreon, nothing he is doing is for your upliftment, period. He said it out of his own mouth. It's not what goes in a man's mouth that defiles him. It's what comes out. And I think Jesus said that. But, Bomani, you've been here for an hour. I've talked a lot because I, I always talk a lot. Um I want to, is there anything else you want to share with my audience before we close this down? I appreciate you coming on and it's been a blessing and a, pri a privilege and an honor. Absolutely. And uh, the other thing that I did uh, try to get him to talk about uh, was the situation of his, you know, it's like, usually we talk about our family in high esteem. Like when, when I travel, people see my little boy and I was like, yeah, I'm you know, one of those people that, you know, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're a single parent and you're doing the best and you have a child with you and he's growing up in a world where he is building and he's learning. You know, this guy has no legacy. At the same time, too, when you ask him about uh, why aren't you not fighting the true enemy, which is racism and white supremacy, which is a global system that destroys black people. Why are you fighting your own people? He has no answers for those things. So what I'm telling people is like family. Are you really going to keep supporting someone who has no intentions to do anything positive for us other than AKA exposing us? If you look at any man, you can look from the richest ones in this country to the poorest ones in this country. They all have one thing in common. They all have their flaws. They all have their shortcomings. They all have their history of maybe one or two things that they've done. Like I heard that he put up, um, uh, Rick from the Bax family, he put up a mugshot of him. Now, that's just crossing the line. Now, we live in a country where you can be in your home and literally 
police come and take you out of your home because someone said you did something or the neighbor said that you did fighting and doing certain things and you don't have to do anything. We still have black men in jail that have been in jail for over 20 years and did not commit the crime. So the fact that he's using these things and using these tactics and then is just terrible. So what I tell you, family, uh, anyone that's interested in anything that we're all doing in Africa, reach out to us directly. Check our website out, check our history, check our workout, and you be the evaluation of what we're doing. Don't let someone who has no track record define what we're doing because if, if you go by based on him, you will never trust any of us because he calls everyone a scammer with no evidence, with no details and things like that. So family, our website is Africa for the Africans.org. And if you want to find me on YouTube so you can see the videos, it's youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007. And while you're also on our website, uh, I got from LinkedIn that uh, shows my full background of everything I've done and so on. And you know, you have the uh, Instagram page, the Facebook page, and you know, the, the website itself it go into details. We even have wonderful tour books. When we do a tour to Africa, we literally have a full program guide, an 88 page book with so many details in it. We literally go above and beyond. And that's why I tell people, when you have information, take a look at information. Don't let someone summarize information by giving you the things. Like this guy will literally look at hundreds and thousands of my comments and find one comment where a troll is going at me and I go back at a troll and use it against me. That is not realistic and that's not respectful. And family, please do not keep feeding into this person because you you just have to be the judge of the situation. And beyond that, Family, a lot of us are doing wonderful things in Africa. Please support all of us and give us your energy. Because like I mentioned, if I didn't have the black folks in America that showed me love, we would have no tour group because 90% of the people that come on the tour group are literally born in America, black folks and things like that. So we have to respect our blessings. And the thing for this family, when people like himself destroy these bridges, I could be one of them people where when he's in Ghana and, he's, and he could have reached out to him and said, hey, Bomani, I need to assist with this because you've been here for a while. You may know some judges. You may know some business people. You may know certain people, which I do because I spend a lot of my time building diplomatic relationship and I've helped a lot of people. But now he has burned the bridge to where now he can't come to any of us because none of us will help him because all he, he came to us the wrong way. You want to talk to a man, you call a man on the phone and you talk with him and you build dialogue, you build a relationship. And then if you want to do an interview, we do an interview, we do it respectfully. You don't attack my flaws and issues and things like that. And you don't drum up things that are not true. So beyond that, family, I think we have repeated a lot of the things about what we're talking about. Now it's up to you, family, to do your research and do the right thing and keep connected to righteousness. And let's keep on building black power. And keep, and if you are with us in Africa, let's work together in Africa. And if you're not and you're just about America or Europe, do your best to work with those who are going to stay in America and Europe and build what you need to build. And together, those of us in Africa and those of us in the diaspora can still work together. Because even though I meet people and they say they don't want to do, do anything with us in Africa, they are also open to you know doing some business with us on the other hand. So it, it, it's you know you just got to kind of work it the best situation you can and for us to just you know, kind of connect and do the right thing. Because what's at stake is our children. Now, I don't know if this man have any children or anything, but... Uh, most of us have children and we want the best for our children. Because I, I told my, my child, my little boy all the time, I was like, it was rough for us in Jamaica. And when we came to America, it was rough. But I told him, I even told him, I told him the suitcase that we traveled in Africa, we came to America with suitcase like that. That's all we had. And our mother worked for $5 an hour uh, back in the 80s and went to nursing school. And all of us are college educated and went to technical school, do, do different things. We made a better way of our life. But at the same time, too, we realized that that is just a foundation of our journey. The next journey for us is to build our family in Africa. So literally, we have land in Africa where I have land for my family and land for other people that are, are doing business with us, our business partners, a.k.a. our investors. And another thing I want to point out is this man literally compared a small business person like myself just getting into real estate development to a German company that can put together five, 10, 20, 30, 50 million dollars and build a whole community subdivision within two years. What we're doing is a little more special and it's a little bit more grassroots. We're putting our money together as a group of black people. 65 black people put their money together, purchase 15 acres and also making payments on another 57 acres and literally having group conference meetings, 
different committees, working on all the things that we need to work on. A lot of stuff is private, so it's only so much you can honestly share. But people right. in the group, if they need anything, we literally make sure they have access to everything that they need to access, all the legal paper, show uh, financial reports showing that we paid the chief, we paid the attorney, we pay all the people we need to pay and things like that. A very respectable operation. And it's sad that it's being disrepresented because people are going by what this unapologetic Negro Pian, black devil coon is saying. So family, if you wanted to see what we're doing, once again, family, see my shirt where it says Africa for the Africans. You type that in, you type in Bomani Tayamba and you just navigate around on YouTube and you'll see that the only person that's going at me is people like him. Everyone else I showed us nothing but love. You, you go to the, the, the different parts of Ghana we go to and say, hey, uh, what kind of person is this guy, Bomani? And people will tell you, I'm about my business. I make sure everybody get paid. I show love. I've supported schools and orphanage since I first started going to Ghana. As a matter of fact, we, brought, we have done well for ourselves and we have literally made our connection. And ultimately, the only thing that we're looking to do is reintegrate ourselves into the African society. So even if we build a community for the African diaspora, we're not stopping anyone from uh, the African continent or anyone in that neighborhood to join us. It's all good. But at the same time, too, we have the most diverse community in the town. The rest of the town is all made up of this communities, primarily, I would say, almost 90 or 100 percent Ghanaians. So how can you question a diverse community of, of black folks that's going to integrate into the rest of the community to where we can have something special? So that's what people do. They, they nitpick of what you do and then they, they splice certain things up it, but they don't tell you the whole truth. So family, that's the whole truth. And if anyone ever want to talk with me or connect with me, visit our website, africafortheafricans.org. You have, you have WhatsApp links on there where you can click on and you can call me or send me a message. And you have uh, message links on there where you can just send emails and things like that. And I'm one of the people that will correspond with you and we'll just build from there. So family, that's what I'm talking about, family. Let's keep it real and do our research and support the Black Power people that are doing the right thing. Hey, I mean, you said it all, you said it all right there. Uh, I mean, brother, just for me meeting you and talking to you for a few minutes, for an hour, I mean, you're one of the most transparent brothers that I've ever dealt with, and you've been doing this for 15 years. I mean, to keep somebody, if you could stay clean for 15 years, I mean, you're somebody who everyone needs to be talking to. Like, I'm not coming to Ghana unless I'm talking to you or, or Dinas, but probably you because Dinas is doing this thing in Nigeria and Sierra Leone. But it's like, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. But you got all these dudes who haven't even touched African soil who are somehow experts on this and experts on that. And they like if he knew so much about what you were doing, why did he have to interview you? He should have been able to sit down and just make a video about everything you're doing. And, and, and Bomani, do me a favor real quick. In the private chat, put all your info, your Instagram, all that, so I can post up here because people are really interested in following you. And the beauty of it is when it's so transparent, you could do what he's what Bomani's doing. You, I've said it before. You can do what I'm doing. Go get you ten or ten or twenty black people and say, let's put our money together and make the load lighter, and you get some land. At the end of the day, even if you don't build nothing on it, you still got some land. So what we're doing is possible for anyone to do. It's not something that you can't do. So that's why it doesn't make any sense for people to sit up attacking people over this. If, if Toon doesn't like the way Bomani does it, Toon could do it. But he got to give his money to Becky. He can't you know, do it. It's hard for him to do it because you have to have technical administrative skills. You have to have diplomatic skills. You have to have a whole lot of skills. It's not as simple. I learned I learned some, some of the things I've learned when I was in the U.S. Navy as an aircraft technician. And on that foundation and as an aircraft technician in the civilian world working with the, the airlines, it is you have to – there's no shortcuts. You have to put the work in. And I didn't start doing the land business uh, that we're doing up until like two years ago. Other than that, I was just basically bringing our bus to other people, trying to work with other groups of people. And when that wasn't working, we decided to do come together, have a discussion. And we have had great success in the last two years uh, from what we're doing. And it's been beautiful. The last few years of life has been great. Uh, business has been well. And I realized that since you know, I'm enjoying life and doing well, people see us, me and my family, me and my little boy and friends, uh, us out there. On, on holiday in Africa, uh, enjoying Aqua Safari, Treasure Island, going around Ghana doing different things. And, you know, it's not to get anybody to be jealous of what we're doing. What we're doing is just showing you that 
you know, we as black people, we can put our energy together, make sacrifices. Sometimes I don't do much in America so I can save my little, save more money and enjoy more time in Africa. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's the best feeling when you can just be in Africa with your own people and then enjoying life. And, right. and, and even more important, supporting black owned business, which is the most important thing, because some of us call ourselves certain things like him. If you ask him and he honestly answer, how many black businesses do you support and how many black businesses you support? He would just literally start changing it to something else because he would not understand the importance of that. He just wanted us to get access to our customers and clientele. Like, how can Bomani take all these people to Africa? How can he have business going? He, you know, people, could, you can look at me and, and judge me for what you want to judge me for, but the, the work ethic is what got the job done. So he can't talk his way out of this. He has to be willing to put the work in. And the first thing he needs to do is make his way to Africa, just like you and I did, and build a foundation from there, not discrediting those who have done the work. Hey, it's true. Hey, Sir Norman Vincent Peale said, you can go anywhere in the world and you'll never find a statue of a critic. So, Toon, you got some traveling to do. You better ask Becky for a couple hundred dollars so you go get on a plane and get your black ass to Africa and start building. Hey, Bomani, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Thank you for this interview. It was a very beautiful, powerful interview for Pan-Africanists all over. Very inspirational. I really appreciate you. Everybody, thank you for watching. We're going to go out like we always go out. We're not changing nothing up. And uh, take this time to support the stream. Like, share, subscribe. Go to Bomani's. Uh, uh, I'm going to leave up Bomani's contact information. And you guys hit them up if you want to do something. Thank you. Till the next time. Peace. My family, my family.
just when I die with you. Every morning in Geneva, we ain't think about behind the scenes. The way I kill it, lose her voice when she trying to scream. We from the trenches, we moved on to the finer things. Now you don't want from H and M to a designer fiend. He was playing games, got you dancing in the middle of the club. Got you dancing in the middle of the club. I know what you chasing. You can only get this feeling from a thug. You can only get this feeling from a thug. Tears falling in this liquor in your cup. All you really want is love, baby. All you really want is love. Only talk to bosses in the pen, they can't be fucking with a scrub Girl, I know you can't be fucking with a scrub Get this feeling in my stomach when you nuts you Man, I'm trying to get to know you sexually Take your own shopping with the therapy Move you out to Cali and my match is taking care of me I know sometimes I'm crazy, I was hoping you could bear me Beauty and the beast, pretty girl with a gangsta I swear you still the baddest in the room with no makeup You the type of woman every hood is a paper I gotta stay on honey, never change it and that sundress, damn, your body so amazing. Love the way you smell, I'm addicted to your fragrance. It's something about you, but I really can't explain it. Just know that you mind, not telling nigga he can save it. He was playing games, got you dancing in the middle of the club. Got you dancing in the middle of the club. I know what you chasing, you can only get this feeling from a thug. You can only get this feeling from a thug. Tears falling in this liquor in your cup. All you really want is love. Baby, all you really want is love. Only talk to bosses independent, can't be fucking with the scrub. 